Police calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast three. Be on the lookout for LaSalle Coupe. Eight X-ray three O seven two. Eight X-ray three O seven two. Three men in the car. An American, a Mexican, and a Negro. He's gonna want it for robbery and murder. That's all. Rose and murder. Will you help the police in their war against juvenile delinquency? Every boy and girl should be trained to respect the law and despise lawbreakers. Already, many thousands of young boys and girls have joined Rio Grande's junior police department. We offer 15 different free gifts to members, complete G-man and junior detective outfits. Your neighborhood dealer who sells Rio Grande cracks gasoline will show you how to get all 15 of these gifts, all free. If you are interested in police and crime stories, you should read the Calling All Cars News, an interesting, illustrated monthly publication given away wherever Rio Grande cracks gasoline is sold. One of the most effective weapons used by your police in their war on crime is Rio Grande cracks gasoline, which gives so many police cars the lightning-like acceleration, the sensational speed and power which enables them to quickly capture speeders and fleeing criminals. Police cars have made an enviable reputation for these quick captures, and police say Rio Grande Cracks gasoline has proved to be the fastest and most efficient gasoline they have ever used. Every year, more and more cities contract with Rio Grande to use Cracks gasoline exclusively in all their emergency cars. For years now, more police and emergency cars have used Rio Grande Cracks gasoline wherever it is sold than any other brand. And the list is constantly growing. We invite you to make a test in your car with the same tetraethyl-treated Rio Grande cracked gasoline used by police cars and enjoy the thrill of police car performance. Now we are pleased to present Captain Bert Wallace, head of the homicide squad of the Los Angeles Police Department. Captain Wallace. Good evening, friends. We hear much about the reformation of the hardened criminal. It rarely happens that way. Once a criminal has stepped across the borderline into dishonesty, it seems that he can't resist the temptation to turn another trick. It is very discouraging to police officers to spend so much time and so much of the taxpayer's money to capture a bandit and then have him turned loose by the parole system after a short jail sentence. Police know only too well that they will soon pick up evidence that the so-called reformed criminal has returned to his erring ways. Police records are full of cases of men and women arrested again and again and again. Police know that most major crimes are committed by experienced criminals who have police records. Tonight's broadcast tells the story of a gang of hold-up men composed, with one exception, of ex-convicts. It gives a typical example of how these men, whose minds have already been poisoned against law and order, delight in pitting their strength against the law enforcement agencies. Their punishment by the courts does not teach them a lesson. As you will see, it is necessary for your police department to keep a watch on all known criminals and paroled convicts. And it is from their ranks that the police make most of their arrests. I hope that the moral taught by tonight's program will be instrumental in keeping many potential law violators from making that dangerous first step. I very much fear that, once having tasted the forbidden fruits of crime, it is almost impossible to return to a respectable life, and that the police must arrest the criminally inclined again and again, if necessary, until they have been put behind the bars for good. Our story opens on a warm summer afternoon in 1932 in a little jewelry store on South Vermont Avenue in Los Angeles. The proprietor, black magnifying glass in his eye, is repairing a watch when a customer wanders in, followed by two companions, one a Negro. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, well, good afternoon. And what can I do for you? I want to look at your watches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About, uh, about what price watch uh, you have in mind? Oh, something around $35. $35, yeah. Well, yes, we, we have some very nice uh, numbers at that price. Just a minute and I will show you. Here. Now, now, here's a very smart watch. Swiss movement. Guaranteed. Here. Hold up your hands. What? Hold up your hands. My God, my sister's here. Now, shut up. Dump those watches into the bag, Frank. Take this bird into the back room, Hank. Okay, boss. Look, Bob, here is the bag of jewels. Diamonds, rubies. Okay, dump it in and don't talk so much. we got to make time. I don't miss that silverware back there. No, I get in. Hey, boss, did you have doors open back here? Well, lock it, dummy. Yow, yow. Look up. Here comes somebody. All right, pile that junk into the sack. I'll take care of him. What do you want? I'm looking for the manager. You the manager? No, I'm not. Oh, I see. Well, I'd like to get my wife's watch fixed. It seems the main spring is... Get in the back room. Yes, yes. Paul will be here soon. I said get in the back room. What's that in your hand? Well, I declare a gun. I'll give you three to get in the back room. Well, the police will hear of this. One. And it'll go hard with you. Two. I never was one to stand by and see the lock broken. What, what's going on in here, boss? Never mind now, Hank. You got the junk, Frank? See, si, the sack is full. How about you, Hank? I ain't in time yet, boss. All right, forget it. Get going. This will be a tough beef. We'd better scram quick. Oh, my God. They've killed him. Help! Police! 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 A few moments later, the police arrive. The clues are meager. The frightened jeweler's description of the bandit, the bullet which is later removed from the skull of the murdered customer, and a pillowcase which one of the bandits had dropped in his flight. This pillowcase, which was used as a sack for the loot, is turned over to Ray Pinker of the police department's laboratory. Later in the day, he makes his report to Inspector Davidson of the homicide detail. Well, Ray, what did you find? I was able to make out this erased laundry mark. It's uh, 1471. 1471. Just a minute till I make a note of that. Well, there seems to have been a name worked into this material in the thread. Probably the name of a hotel. They've carefully pulled all the threads out, and I haven't been able to decipher that yet. Very well. Keep after it. You bet I will. But the clue of the pillowcase leads nowhere. For the search of the hotel whose property it is results in no suspects fitting the description of the bandits. It looks like a clean getaway. That night, York returns to the gang's hideout from the fence. Who is that? I guess that's the boss. And maybe the bulls. You answer him, Hank. And then get all shot up? No, sir. Not me. No, sir. Ah, it's Bob. It's three rings. I will get it. Well, boss, how you make out? Not bad, not good. How much is that? Well, he gave me 500 bucks for the stuff. Only five thieves? You should have let me take it to this fence. I know, Bob. I could get lots more. That's the best I could do. How much are you holding out for yourself? I cut that talk, Mug. I don't do business that way. Okay, drop the gat. All right, boys, this will not get us no place. Uh, let us have the door. Okay, here you are. I figure the cut this way. 150 for Frank and me. And a hundred apiece for Hank and Tiny. Hey, what is this? No, no, this? just a minute there, boy. Now, uh, listen. Frank and I really pulled the job. Hank mussed around in the back room all the time. I don't know what he was doing, playing kiss the pillow with a Dutch jeweler or something. Now, listen here, boss. I can explain all that. I'll tell and you. Tiny only drove the car. Frank and I did the real work. Yeah, and you pulled a beef bumping off that old man. Yeah, man. you you didn't have to do that, boss. Well, how'd I know the guy was deaf? I can't stop to ask questions during a job. Listen here, York. You pulled a beef. But if the bulls get us, we'll all take the rap for it. Oh, maybe only life for us while you swing. We're all in it. We're cutting even, see? Yes, Bob. Me, I do not want more than the rest. And if you don't cut even, York, I'd just soon turn the heat on you as look at you. Well, I don't want no trouble. You bet you don't. You don't want me to press the button on this toy I got here, do you, York? Now, how do we cut? Okay. It's an even split. Ah, uh, that's more like it. Here you are. A hundred and a quarter apiece. In mark money, York? Oh, shut up. Where's Rosita, Frank? Oh, my little deeds? I do not know. Back in the kitchen, maybe. Well, I'm going out and talk to her. Rosita? Yes? Where are you? Here in the kitchen. Hello, Chiquita. 
Yorkie. Hello, querido. I got something for you, honey. For your Zita? What is it? Here. Oh, Yorkie. How oh, beautiful. A real diamond. It is real, no? Well, if it ain't, I did a lot of work this afternoon for nothing. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, Rosita love you so very much for it. Rosita, she give you big kiss for him. Hmm. I like that. Oh, Rosita, she knows how to kiss, eh? I'll say. Now, look, here's something else for you. Something else? Yeah, here's 50 bucks. Go ahead and get yourself some glad rags. Oh, Yorkie, you are so nice to me. I give you another kiss. Oh. Huh. Say, Rosita, how'd you like to marry me? Marry you? Be Mrs. Yorkie? No, really? Yeah, only up and up. Have a pattery hookers and everything. <laughs> me, I think that would be one swell good idea. You do? Mm -hmm. Gee, that's great. No, no, wait a minute. Listen, I'm liable to be in trouble. You know that. Trouble? Oh. Tell me, he said something had gone wrong today. What is it? Well, truth is, I... Killed a guy. Well? Well, don't that make no difference? Why should it? We can go to Mexico. We can run away. I will take you to the little town where I was born. They will never find you there. Yeah, but we ain't got no dough. Get some. Go get some like you got these. Only get a lock. Rob a bank. Rob a bank? That's an idea. A good idea. I'll talk to the boys about it right now. Your key. Yeah? You forgot to kiss Rosita. Oh, yeah. Huh. Chiquita, here are the berries. Hey, boys. Yeah. I got a great idea. Like bumping off an old man? Oh, shut up. Now, listen, Rogers. I'm sick of the sight of you. Now, get out. What do you mean, get out? You pulled your last job with me, and I'm through with you. Ah, uh, look here. What you heard me? me. You got your cut. More than you deserve. Your paid off's a scram. Well, if that's the way you feel about well, it. Well, it is the way I feel about it. You're nothing but a small change, Rogers. Why, well, I've been sprung out of more big houses than you ever heard of. Yeah, well, listen. I done my time, too. Now, you'd never know it. You talk like a kid sticking up gas stations. Now, beat it. I got no time for you. Okay. But maybe I'm making a mistake. Yeah, and maybe I'm just wising up. And don't slam the door when you go out. That guy gets on my nerves. Oh, God, he, he's a good man, boss. Well, I don't want him around me, you get it? Yes, yes, I, I showed sure up. Yes. Okay. Now, here's the idea. We're going to stick up a bank. A bank? Mm -hmm. That's a big job, Bob. You're telling me? Well, we're doing only big jobs from now on. Now, look here. We're in up to our necks now. If they ever get us, we're on our way to the big house. But if we pull a couple of nice jobs, we can all get out of the country with enough to live on for the rest of our lives. You're figuring on getting some real important money, is that it, boss? Right. Now, we'll need another guy, a good hard guy to pull a bank job. Now, can you think of anybody? Say, I've got it. Turcot. You know him? Don't seem to if I does, no. See, si, see, si, I know him. He is all right. He is very good with the guard. All right. We'll start on one of these little branch banks out this way. And then, just to be sure we get enough for the rest of our lives, we'll knock over one of the big downtown banks. Listen, we've got everything to gain. And if we stick around here too long, the bulls are bound to pick us up. It's in the cards. The homicide squad down at the city hall is a tough bunch of monkeys. And don't ever forget it. The gang works slowly, cautiously, planning their crime. They do not strike until a month later, and then, late in the morning of August 23rd, 1932, as the manager of a branch bank on South Broadway answers the telephone. Oh, hello, Dave. How are you? Yes, yes, indeed. Oh, that'll be all right. Yeah. Yes, we can handle you for that amount. Yes. Yeah. Say, Dave, don't hang up. Three tough fellows just walked in. One of them's a Negro. Yeah. Yes, Dave, it's a holdup. They just pulled their guns. Call the police right away. I gotta hang up. Hey, you over there. Uh, who, me? Yeah. You move to the back. Now, get going. Keep them covered, Hank. When I get the dough. All right, boss. All right. Pass it out, Frank. See, see. see hey, that. I told you, watch that guy's got a gun. Oh, 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 no, he got me. He got me, Bob. He got me. Stop the car. Stop the car. You 
Crikey, Carter Stone. Have you brought me the money? I don't have it, Rosita. Frank's got it. Well, where is he? Do you he He's... He's shot. Shot? Yeah. They plugged him. Well, what happened? Oh, the boy's got buck fever. It didn't turn out like we figured. Everything went wrong. Well, where is Joe Francisco? We left him on the street. You left my uncle on the street to die? Oh, listen, baby. We couldn't help it. There wasn't time to get him. That manager was blazing away at us. You left my uncle to die. Oh, honey. He ain't bumped off. Hank is. He's dead. But Frank's okay. He's just wounded out there. You left him to die. You're a thief. He was the only one in the world who was good to me. Oh, now, listen, Rosa. <laughs> listen to me. I swear I'll spring him from the hospital. I'll spring him if I have to bump off a half a dozen guys to do it. No, he's dead. I know it. You let him die. I never want to see you again. Get out. Get out. Get out. Bank holder. He's the bandits? Two of them. Dead? Yes, both of them. Okay. Keep that card back, will you? Yes, sir. Here's the manager of the bank, Romero. He shot these two guys. I see. How many others were there? Well, there was, there was one more in the bank at the time. He seemed to be the leader. And then there were two more in the car. I shot at the car as it drove away. Maybe I hit one of them. I don't know. What kind of a car was it? It was a LaSalle Coupe. Did you get the license number? No, I... I couldn't get it. Oh, uh, sir. Yes? Oh, officer, I've got the license number of that car. You have? Yes. I was just coming into the bank when I heard the shooting. I hid in the doorway and watched them drive away. I wrote down the license. Here it is. 8X3072. Well, that's fine. Thank you very much. Very much obliged, lady. Oh, Burris. Yes? Call headquarters and get this on the broadcast and teletype. Bandits escaped in a LaSalle Coupe. License number 8X3072. Right. And say, here's some addresses and telephone numbers from the Mexican's body. Good. These ought to lead us someplace. Say, Romero, I just found this in the teller's cage. A pillowcase, huh? Yep, and the same kind as we found in that jewelry store murder on Vermont last month. Say, it is a fact. Now we're getting someplace. The pillowcase turns out to be a mate to the one used in the jewelry store holdup. And the addresses found in Alvarado's pocket lead the officers to the gang's hideout on Mercury Street. Under the direction of Inspector Davidson, the homicide detail, a stake out of the place reveals only a young girl as the occupant of the house. Late in the day, the officer decides to pay her a call. Yes? We're police officers, ma'am. Matteo Francisco, how is he? Who? Uncle Frank, he is all right. She must mean Frank Alvarado. Frank? What's his last name? Alvarado. Frank Alvarado, huh? See, si. is he all right? He's dead, ma'am. Dead? Yeah. Oh, oh Tio Francisco. Pobre Tio Francisco. That pig leaving him on the street to die. What's that? That Yorkie. He let my uncle die. Yorkie? Who's he? You want to know, eh? Yeah. You want to know everything so you can catch him, eh? Well, I will tell you everything. He left my uncle to die, so you shall know everything. Come in. I will help you find that pig. Rosita's information leads the officers to a rooming house on Maple Street, operated by an Oriental, where York and Alvarado stayed on August 15th. Oh, hello. How do you do? What can I do for very nice American gentleman? Let's say you register. Oh, what for I shall register? Don't ask so many questions. We're from police headquarters. Oh, oh, yes, very fine policeman. I shall. Here, you please look. Yeah, let's see now. 19th, 18th. Sixteen. Here we are. Hmm. Just two names. Thomas Kern and William Cummings. Probably phonies. Yeah. Hey, you. Know anything about these two fellas? Oh, what a fellow. Oh, these are... Oh, what do you want to know? What do they look like? 
Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, I scared. I not remember. That many days ago. I forget. Many people come. Many people go. I not notice. Yeah, I'll bet. Uh, please? Try to think what these two men were like, will you? It wasn't so long ago. Only a week. Oh, no. I'm sure I cannot think. I no remember. Well, then, that's that. Well, maybe he doesn't remember. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Rosita willingly accompanies the officers as they search all night through the hills in the vicinity of the hideout for the fugitives. Then she suggests that they may be at a coffee house she knows of on South Main Street. Early in the morning, they visit this place, and Burris goes in, but soon returns to the car. What luck? Huh? Eh, none. No, they're not there. Nobody's seen anyone like them for days. Maybe. Say, I got a hunch. You know what? Let's go back to that dump on Maple Street. What dump? The one Burris and I looked over yesterday. Well, it's worth a try. See? See, it is a good idea. They will be there, maybe. Then the pig will pay. Oh, what the for? You wake me up before Andre Busan in the sky? I want to look at that register again. Oh, very good. I show. Anybody else come in since we were here before? Oh, people come. They go. Yes, I think very fine people he come. You free to look? Hmm. Now look, Romero. Huh? Here's the same birds registered yesterday as registered on the 16th. Now, let me see. Yep, you're right. Yeah, let me see that handwriting. Well, say, that checks with this, you see? Now, what's that? York's writing from the police records. Well, then I think we've got the boys. Hey, you. What room are they in? Oh, what a room? Oh, I think uh, number 16, I think. Are they there now? I know nothing. Did you tell them we've been here before? Oh, I run extra special fine rooming house. I know nothing else. Okay, you got a key to 16? I think, or maybe I find it here on the desk. All right, find it. Let us into that room. Oh, I wonder if this is a good thing for a customer. Don't forget, we're police officers. Oh, yes, sir. I remember now. I open now. You come around to this way, please. Maybe guns ready, boys. These are tough monkeys. All okay. right. Well, here we are. All set? You bet. Okay. Open her up. All right, I do. Oh, I know what I do. Bolt on other side. Uh, he's a lock. Uh, they got it bolted from the inside, eh? Who's there? Open the door. I heard it. Open up. All right, don't break the door down. All set, boys. Okay. On your toes now. Hey, what's the thing? Yeah, we're police officers. Stick him up. Stick him up. You two over there. Okay. What's that guy on the bed? He's got a gun. Drop it. Look out, Andy. He's going to shoot. Let him have it. Now drop it. Okay. Is it the bed? Pretty bad. Where? Down here. Sorry, but you shouldn't have whipped that rod out from under the covers. I know. I asked for it. Snap the braces on the boys. Hey, Buddy, you call the ambulance and take Turk out to Georgia Street Receiving Hospital, will you? Okay. Andy and I'll take Mr. York here to Central. It's okay with me, boys. I can take it. It ought to be okay. Okay. All right. Come on, let's go. Listen, keep a stiff upper lip, Turk. And don't say nothing. Right. So long, pal. Robert uh, York confessed to the murder of William Kirkpatrick in the jewelry store holdup and implicated his previous accomplice, Rogers, in the crime. LeMay, the driver in the bank robbery, was sent to San Quentin for seven years to life. <clears throat> Turcotte permanently wounded, and Rogers were given life sentences on a verdict of first-degree robbery and murder. And Robert York was hanged. So these habitual criminals again, again learned that you cannot beat the law. This time, the evidence presented by the police was so damning that the courts meted out stiff sentences. I hope that a mistaken sense of mercy will not result in these confirmed criminals being released from their life sentence to prey again on respectable citizens. Thank you, Captain Wallace. Warning. When you change your motor oil... You should use a different grade entirely. You have been using winter oil. It's time to change to summer oil now. 
And if you want to know exactly what grade of oil your car should have, ask the independent dealer in your neighborhood who sells Rio Grande cracked gasoline. He has been trained to apply the Sinclair law of lubrication, and he has the latest factory information on every car. He can tell you exactly what grade of motor oil is best for your engine. And he can tell you exactly what kind of lubricant should be applied to every moving part. Sinclair is the recognized leader in the manufacture of scientific lubricants. And the Sinclair Lubrication Manual is the recognized authority on the correct application of oils and grease. Sinclair has become America's largest manufacturer of lubricants. And Sinclair experts work with every automobile maker to determine the correct lubricant for every part of your automobile. This information, revised from week to week, is placed in the hands of the Rio Grande cracked gasoline dealer in your neighborhood so he can lubricate your car scientifically and accurately. It costs you no more to get Sinclair Scientific Lubrication or Sinclair Motor Oil, and you get a lot more for your money. All cars, attention all cars. Cancellation of broadcast three. Regarding three men warned for murder and robbery. These men are now in custody. That's all. Rolls and clerks. Frederick Lindsley, your narrator, bidding you good night for the Rio Grande Oil Company.